we're going to ink up a plate so I'm going to show you um, what I've prepared to do that so I've got the plate here I've got a roller to roll the ink on um, my plate is sitting on a magnetic sheet uh, so that the plate doesn't uh, move around when I'm when I'm um, wiping it back uh, I've put some paper underneath and the reason for that is so that I can lift up the plate quite easily so you'll see that the plate doesn't actually move around these magnetic sheets are really useful uh, so I've got my roller here I'm going to roll the ink onto the plate rather than scraping it on with a piece of cardboard which is a more traditional method for an intaglio plate where you scrape the ink on but uh, with these plates they can be quite fragile so I prefer to roll the ink onto the plate rather than scrape it. I've got some tarlatan here ready to be used. I've got another piece here. Um, this one I've softened up quite a lot and you can see how hopefully you can see that it's actually quite soft as opposed to this piece which is quite stiff that hasn't been softened yet. So you want your tarlatan to be nice and soft always in a little pad, flat pad there without the creases. So always working with a flat pad. So to soften up your tarlatan, uh, usually you rub it on onto a surface which is sharp. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I would rub it quite dramatically on a surface like that, and that tends to soften up the fibres. And when you when you do rub it on the edge, you want to rub it in all directions that the fibres are running. So. This tarlatan is actually called um, coarse tarlatan as opposed to fine tarlatan. And the coarse one is much better for these plates. Uh, so I've got my ink here. I'm using Charbonnel Aqua Wash um, ink. I've got black ink here. Uh, it comes in a tube like this or you can get it uh, in a tin, which obviously you have more in a tin and um, that will go further uh, a lot more economical i mix the ink with a little bit of uh, plate oil uh, this plate oil is also aqua wash brand uh, the charbonnel aqua wash um, and I'll, I'll show you how i ink uh, how i prepare the ink in a minute and i've got a little palette knife here to prepare to um, mix the ink um, okay let's mix up some ink this is a, a plate of a fish, um, so I'm going to mix up, I'm not sure if you can see that, I'm going to mix up some blue-black ink, which I think will be appropriate for this plate. Just take away some of these sheets, I only need one. Okay, so I'm going to put out some black ink first. Just a little bit. Okay. So I'm guessing here the quantities. I want my, I don't want it to be a blue, blue. I want it to be like a cool black. So I think I've got the ratios fairly good. Um, this is ocean blue. So let's just mix that up and see what that looks like. Yep, that looks good. Now we put a little touch of plate oil in the ink. The plate oil helps the ink to loosen up. Come on, how'd you come? You only need, for this amount of ink, probably half a five cent piece worth of plate oil. So I've mixed that in. And I can see how the ink has loosened up quite a lot. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to just test that colour. And I usually use a little piece of etching paper that's a, the same sort of etching paper that I'm going to ink up on. And if I just scrape a little bit of that ink on, I can see the colour. It's quite close to what I want. Yep, that's a lovely cool black. So that's good. 
Now, I'm going to spread the ink out with my roller, but before I do that, I always clean my bench because if there's any uh, dust on the bench, it will mix in with the ink and that can potentially scratch the plate. So it's very important to always clean back your work area before you start. Okay, so I've got my ink out. I'm going to spread it out a little bit. And then roll it out quite thinly. Make sure your roller is evenly covered. And I'm not sure if you can hear the sound that that ink is making, but that sound tells me that it's a good consistency. Okay. And also wipe the plate. Make sure the plate doesn't have any So the plate has to have a thin but overall cover of ink. So because I've rolled the ink onto the surface of the plate, and this is an intaglio plate, which means that the etch is in the plate, and so you want your ink to work its way into the plate. But at the moment, we have just put the ink on the surface of the plate. So once we've done that, I'm going to get my tarlatan and I'm going to use my flat pad tarlatan to push the ink into the plate. So I'm pushing it in, putting quite a fair bit of force on my hand. And you can see the sort of movement I'm making with the hand to get the ink into the plate. Okay, once I've done that on the plate, I can start to wipe the ink off with my tarlatan and I can see that the image is starting to come through. I'm going to move my tarlatan around to a cleaner part, again making a little flat pad and wiping away. So I started off with a lot of pressure to get the ink into the plate and now I'm gradually working the pressure off my hand. I don't want to take the ink out of the grooves of the plate so I gradually just wipe back with less and less pressure until I can see the image come through quite nicely. Again, clean part of the Tarleton. Now I'm just up to this, up to a point where I would say that I'm buffing the surface of the plate. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to just take the backing sheet away. That's quite dirty because I don't want any of that ink around the edge to work its way back into the plate. So I want to work with a clean surface underneath. And I'm going to get some paper and now just buff the highlights of the plate, which are the green plate, uh, photopolymer plate coming through. You can see it quite clearly now. Hopefully you can see it as well. Now you'll notice that I've got a flat hand and a flat piece of paper underneath. I don't, I'm going to avoid any sort of scratches on the plate by keeping everything nice and flat and gentle. So and you can see the ink is still coming off the plate a little bit. So clean paper. And this is probably the last buff that I need to do 
turn the paper around so that it's clean again. This is an image of a fish inside an aquarium. Uh, I don't know what sort of fish it is, but I was fascinated with the uh, textures of the fish. It's quite ugly really, but it's beautiful <laughs> as well. Um, it's a fish in an aquarium um, in Spain, in Santander, uh, two years ago. I took this photo and I've never printed this plate, so I thought it would be a good one to use as a demonstration. Okay, I think that's pretty good. The background of the fish is black, so I'm just going to... Um, not work that background too much because it's, it's just a, a black background so we want to leave the so now I'm just going to clean back the edges and I just put my plate on the edge of the magnetic board there so that it doesn't go anywhere and with a little cloth just clean the edges ready for printing That's it. Okay, we'll take it over to the press and see what happens. Here we have the press. Uh, I've set it up uh, already. The press has been set up with maximum pressure. For photopolymer plates, you really need as much pressure as you can get off your press without damaging the plate. Uh, this particular press is not, uh, uh, it's a semi-professional press. Uh, the roller isn't as uh, thick as, as it, it should be um, to get the best results but it's a pretty good press it's a hill dav from uh, made in sydney um, and it's uh, it does the job quite nicely if it's got maximum pressure uh, i've got two blankets on the press um, only uh, most people would use three but i find that for photopolymer plates that two blankets is sufficient they're two six mil blankets or you can use a, a six mil and a three mil my bottom blanket is um, a woven wool blanket which is good quality um, and they're already quite dirty because a lot of a lot of people in this studio use this press um, and so the blankets do show a lot of wear and tear very quickly um, I've got a registration sheet underneath uh, which has been drawn up um, as a general registration sheet but we'll, we'll use it today for this test. So I'm going to bring my plate over and pop it on the press. Um, it's probably good to keep your gloves on until you get to this point so that your hands stay as clean as possible. I've already taken mine off. A little dust off the plate. So I'm going to put the plate down on the press without uh, getting ink on the press bed, keeping the press bed as clean as possible. So let's go and get our paper. One moment. Got my paper here. I'm using a Fabriano Rosapina paper. Uh, I'm gripping it with a couple of little holders that I've made from milk cartons. Um, so that the paper stays nice and clean. You don't want any ink on the uh, on the on the paper from your fingers. So I'm going to put down my paper. I'm eyeballing the registration in this scenario, but as you can see, I'm putting it up one end, holding it down with my fingers, and then I'm just going to slide the paper over the top and let it go without moving underneath. Then on top of that, I put a piece of tissue, whoops, tissue paper. The tissue paper will act as a barrier between the blanket and the wet paper. So it keeps the blankets dry. And it also stops any um, ink from transferring it on, onto the blankets if there is any ink on the, uh, on the outside of the paper. Right, so 
I'm going to take this through one way, but then I, normally you would just pull a press through once. But I'm going to bring it back so that you can see. how the print comes out so that I don't have to move the camera. So usually once is more than enough to get a good print. Okay. Here we go. So first of all, we take the blankets off, roll them back over, press. Take the tissue off. And then using my nippers again, I'm going to reveal the print. Great. And I'll just bring the camera up closer so you can see the result. 